everybody out there in the bookverse, it's Stephanie and today I am back with a really exciting announcement. I have been looking forward to doing this for a long, long time and I am finally going to be hosting my very first readathon on my channel. Oh, ever since I started watching booktube this has kind of been something that I've wanted to do, dreamed about doing. I don't know if that sounds a little dramatic, but it's true. I really have always wanted to host my own readathon and now I'm going to and I am so beyond excited for this. This is definitely heavily inspired by Becca from Becca and the Books. I'll link her channel and the information for her readathon that she hosts down below as well because she does do a kind of mini 48 hour bookopolathon and my readathon is also based on the TBR game that I play. So this readathon is going to be a 48 hour readathon of TBR Mini Star Hop. So I have played this by myself on my channel many times and I have played it along with my Patreons as well, but this time I am going to be inviting all of you to play along with me and I think this is going to be a lot of fun. So let's start out with some basic information. The dates for the readathon are going to be at midnight, Saturday, June 25th. So the morning, like before Saturday starts UK time, and it's going to end 48 hours later at midnight on like between Sunday, Monday. So as Monday starts UK time as well. And now some of you might be asking me, why, Stephanie, are you doing this on UK time when you live in the United States? And I was thinking about it as I was trying to decide when I was going to host this readathon. And it just felt like if I started it at midnight my time, that would be like seven in the morning on Saturday. And it would end at seven in the morning on Monday for anyone in the UK who wanted to participate. And I thought it might be more convenient for everyone in involved if I just did you take K time because then it won't be such an obnoxious start and end time. That being said, I do have a link to a spreadsheet of the different start and end times for different time zones. If you would like to go check your time zone, you don't really, you want to make sure that you're getting the right time. You can always Google this. That's fine. It's going to come out just the same. But if you want to just go look at the spreadsheet, you can do that as well. So there are a couple social media places where you can go to kind of keep up on announcements about this. One is of course here on my channel. Uh, another one is going to be my Instagram. I will be posting quite a bit in the stories there. If you would like to follow me on Instagram so you can keep track there as well. And also Discord. So I do have a Discord channel and I will be making different channels within it in order to do readathon stuff readathon stuff over there as well. So those are the three places. If you want to keep up on stuff, you definitely can go there and check that out. If you would like to just follow stuff on the YouTube channel, that is fine as well. Whatever you feel like doing, whatever you're comfortable with. Now, there are a couple ways you can go about playing the game. First, you can just do what I do. You can go along with my roles, my prompts, and try to fulfill the game that way if you'd like to. And that's totally fine. That's the way my Patreons have been doing or anyone who plays along. When I play my game and post the videos, I am going to be posting all of my roles on my Instagram and then the prompts that come from them on my Discord. So you can keep track of them there if like you're not awake during the time that I do them or anything like that. So definitely you will be able to have access to those prompts. And if you feel like doing it that way, that is totally totally fine. It'll be a lot of fun. We'll be able to um, be following the same prompts and on the same timeline. So that is one way you can go about it. Or if you want to play this game for yourself, you can either download a board that I have linked down below. I have a color one and a black and white one, depending on how you want to print it out. I know some people don't want to do color printing. So I did make a black and white board version as well, if you'd like to go that route or you can make your own board. The board that I have, I just painted it and then laminated it. So it's not super hard to make if you would like to go that route, if you're super artsy. I'm not, this is like one of the only artsy projects I have made since I graduated from high school. So, but if you are so inclined, feel free. And also if you do that, post it somewhere on social media and tag me so I can see your boards that you make because I think that would be a lot of fun. 
For the prompts, there are a couple ways you can go about that as well. I do have a spinner wheel app on my phone and that is how I get the prompts when I play this game. I have put the name of the spinner wheel app that I use down below. It is free if you want to download that onto your phone and you can use that to put in the prompts. I will have a list of the different prompts that I have within each spinner wheel so you can put in the same ones if you would like to. Or if you feel like you would prefer to do this with cards like I do for my regular monthly game. I did link some cards that you can print out down below as well and then you can just write the prompts on the back of those and you can look at the different prompts uh, that I have on my spinner wheel as well. So you can go either way, whichever one you prefer to do, whichever one works best with like your life, your taste, your schedule, it's up to you. If you don't want to download an app, that's fine. You can use the cards. So kind of a lot of options here, whichever you like to do best, but I'll just kind of walk you through how it works when we play this game. So you roll one dice and you can either have a physical dice or if you want to get a dice app on your phone, whichever you like, and then you move however many spaces it says to move on the board. Use whatever you like for a game piece. I use a little mini Millennium Falcon, which I love, but you can use anything. Uh, and whatever you land on, that is the type of prompt that you are going to pull from. So if you land on a star, you pull a star prompt. If you land on a sun, you pull a sun prompt. If you land on a moon, you pull a moon prompt. Those are pretty straightforward. The other places that are on the board are these little black holes. If you land on one of these, I'm sorry, I'll just say that right now. But you will have to go back to the beginning and you have two options you can go with for this. When I play the mini game, I put my TBR for the month on a spinner wheel and I will spin that and whatever book I get is the book I will read for that prompt. If you don't wanna do it that way, the way I do it for my regular game that I play on a monthly basis is I have all the series that I am in the middle of in a, ooh, I have it right here what I call a wormhole jar. And so you can pick one of those out and whichever series you pick out, you read the next book within that series. Whichever method you choose to go with is fine with me. I am gonna go with the TBR one just because some of the series I'm in the middle of, the next book is like a thousand pages long and I just rather not have that pop up in a 48 hour readathon. But you do you, whatever you feel most comfortable with. The only other unique spot is this final big star here at the end. For that one, that is a free pick. Whatever you would want to read, you can read it. If you wanna pick a really short children's book, go for it. If you wanna choose a graphic novel, awesome. If you have 12 hours left and you wanna choose a big adult high fantasy, also awesome. That spot is your choice because it's almost like a reward for getting to the end, you know? And that's the basics for how to play the game. For the readathon, you can use books that you have already started, but use your best judgment on this. If you are 400 pages in and there's only 440 pages, maybe that's not the best book to pick. But if you're only 100 pages in to a 400 page book, go ahead and use it. Again, I'm not really gonna be policing this. And if you want to use a book that you're already the majority of the way through and you feel like that's what you wanna go with, do it. I just want you to have fun with this readathon and I don't want you to feel pressure. I know that sometimes with readathons when you're not allowed to read books that you've already started, it can be a little bit of a time crunch and pressure to finish books that you have started before you start the readathon and I don't want you to feel like that for this one, especially because it's only a 48 hour readathon. So feel free to read books that you have already started. You cannot double up on prompts, uh, which does make sense because you cannot move on to the next role before you have completed the book for the role prior. So if I roll and my first one is a moon, I can't even know what my next prompt is going to be until I have completed a book to fulfill that moon prompt, which is a little bit dangerous and gives the game a little bit more of a like scary feel almost because you don't know what's going to happen. I could pick a thick book for this moon prompt and then I could zoom all the way up to this black hole and have to go all the way back to the beginning and have way less time. So that's kind of something to factor into your book choices. I think it's a lot of fun to do it that way just because your initial picks can really make or break your game. Now, I am very much aware that there are a lot of people out there who will not be able to complete this game in 48 hours. And that is totally 
fine. If it stresses you out to try to complete this game of 48 hours, don't worry about it. I don't want this to be stressful. I want it to be fun. So if you want to take more than 48 hours to complete this game, that is 100% okay. If you want to take a month to complete this game, that's also totally okay. You can start when we start and then finish whenever you're done. I really don't mind. The only incentive to finish within 48 hours is I am going to be doing a random giveaway of two books to people who do end up winning the game within the 48 hour time period. I think this is kind of just a fun incentive to be able to inspire you to finish in 48 hours. But if you don't, that's okay too. It's not like you lose the readathon. You can continue doing this as long as you want. I have absolutely no problem with that. The people who do end up completing it within the 48 hour time period, I have a link down below to a survey that you can fill out. It will have how many prompts it took you to complete the game, um, how long it took you to complete it, how many pages you read, that type of thing, just so I can kind of see how you did. And you will be entered into a giveaway of two books from the people who end up completing it within that 48 hour time frame. Now this is only open to countries to which book depository ships. I'm really sorry to any countries that it doesn't ship to. I just know that shipping costs are really crazy right now and I just couldn't afford to ship to certain countries. But if book depository ships to your country, you can enter into this giveaway and you do need to be willing to at least put your email address in there or some sort of social media place where I can contact you. So if you do win, I can reach out and grab your address from you. So. I think that is the basics of the readathon. Like I said, we have some social medias linked down below so you can go ahead and follow those so you can be up to date on everything that is happening. And I am just really, really looking forward to this. I think it's going to be so, so much fun. It's kind of a competitive readathon against yourself, which I think is going to be awesome. A lot of readathons, you are on teams and you're competing against other people. But this one is kind of a can I finish within this time frame type readathon, or it's just a fun game to play in order to pick which books you read. Like I said, this is the first readathon that I have ever hosted, so I'm sure there are going to be questions, some hiccups, things like that. So I'm going to put a frequently asked questions page over in the Discord so you can go there if you do have any questions. And if the answer is not there, you can ask the question in the questions section of the Discord as well so that I can go ahead and answer them or someone else who knows the answer can answer them in that forum. I will be hosting a lot of live sprints throughout this so keep your eyes open for that. I will link a playlist down below and you can just follow that if you would like to in order to keep up with the live sprints. I am probably only going to be doing them on my channel at this point just because I am not quite as um, adept at hosting readathons as Becca is. I know she has put a lot of cool things where you jump to different channels for the reading sprints within her readathon, but I'm just going to be hosting them. It's not going to be completely live. They're not going to be the full 48 hours. Obviously, I like my sleep, but you can definitely join in a lot of reading sprints. It's going to be a significant portion of this live. And again, I will be posting in the different social medias as well. So you can keep track of what I'm doing and what other people are doing. I'm hoping this will just be a fun readathon where you can just chat with other people, spend 48 hours just completely immersed in books and the bookish community. And yeah, let me know down in the comments if you're going to be participating. And I really hope to see a bunch of you guys there. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.